Welcome to a very special episode of Experience Focused Leaders. We're trying something new here. We're um, talking to uh, practitioners who are on the bleeding edge of innovation. And we found one who happened to be a customer of Relay2 in an industry that we love. Uh, Whitney Boyer is a CMO of LHD Benefits. And she will tell you today how a small marketing team can do some really amazing things. That's why we wanted uh, to hear from you, Whitney, because we were blown away by what you were able to accomplish. Welcome to the pod. Thank you. Thank you for having me on here. Yes, go, go ahead. ahead. No, please. There, I think there were three things that I wanted to talk to you about and touch on a little bit because one of my goals, again, you said we're a, a smaller agency. We have a, a small marketing team. Whenever I introduce a new service or a new platform or a new idea, I want to make sure that we can use it in as many ways as possible and that we have a lot of different UK use cases across a lot of different departments so I can really make sure that, that the value is there. So that's been one of our biggest goals as we're working with the software. Great. Let's dig into that. Yeah, we saw that you're uh, one of those CMOs that is wearing many hats. Right. And maybe the most classical of the B2B CMO really does need to be very close to the sales team and enable the sales team. And we, you had some wonderful stories about how are you doing that? And we'll come back to that. But I think one of the other special things about the world that you live in is that one of the deliverables of LHD benefits is a superior employee experience for your clients. So for those folks that are new to the benefit communications, benefit advisor, world, guide us and explain a little bit, what does that mean? And what are you on the hook for, for your clients? And what are they on the hook for inside their organizations in terms of creating great employee experiences? And then we'll come back to marketing in a second. Okay. Yep. Our marketing department is in charge of essentially every client facing deliverable that we have. And a lot of those deliverables. So a lot of the deliverables that we give them we would call those employer facing. So it's a lot of their financial documents, a lot of their plan performance metrics, a lot of their renewal information. And that's a lot of stuff that we have to provide to them. But then they're also responsible for communicating those benefits then to their employees. And so we try as best that we can to get that information to their employees also. So a lot of the stuff that we have, it's employer facing and employee facing as far as deliverables go, in addition to the whole marketing side that you were talking about. So an example- It's actually, of- it's four. So it's like marketing, sales, then the head of HR, head of finance, CEO, depending on the size of the organization, that is your direct customer. And then their customer, which is- me trying to figure out what open enrollment means and <laughs> why the health of my family depends on me making the right benefit decision. Is that kind yeah. of, did I get those four pieces right? You absolutely did. Yes. Okay. Where do you feel is the biggest challenge right now in the industry, right? Wearing both your hat, maybe the carrier's hat, the insurance carriers that educate people about some of the the plan decisions, and then the HR hat. Where, where does the biggest breakdown or is it all over the board? It's all over the place for sure. But I think one of the biggest issues is communicating your benefit plan and employer's benefit plan to their employees and making sure that they understand what's available to them because the majority of consumers don't really, they aren't really concerned about their benefits until they need them. And then it's you want to get in front of them and educate them before they need it to make sure they're on the right plan to be sure that they're being a smart healthcare consumer, knowing how to shop for the best care for the best value, making sure they know where to go, how to live a healthy lifestyle. So I think communicating that plan and getting that information to the employees is something that a lot of employers struggle with and something that a lot of advisors like us are trying to figure out how we can help with. Got it. And is this a one-time thing that happens like around November, October season around open enrollment, or then when you join a new company or have some new event, or is this really shifting to be an ongoing 
uh, challenge where, you know, how do I take care of myself better and take advantage of many of the things that the company already invests in, pays a lot of money. I just want to throw out a statistic in case our audience doesn't know. It shocked me, but I think what the benefit advisors and brokers drive $1.2 trillion in insurance uh, spend in the United States alone. And so this is a major part of our economy, major part of the total overall healthcare span. So this is very sizable decisions that these ultimately the employees need to make, even though there are some guardrails that you provide and advise them on. Is that accurate? Yes, that, that is spot on. And so I would say historically, open enrollment, if you're renewing your medical plan 1-1, which the majority of employers their plan will start at the first of the year. So then they have open enrollment, like you said, sometime around October or November. And historically, that's when we know that we have those employees' attention. So that's when we would try to do the majority of the education is, okay, here are the plans that are available to you. Here's how you choose which plan, and it'll take effect January, and then you're done after that. But we are definitely transitioning into figuring out how can we continue to educate people throughout the entire year. We have a lot of different initiatives to stay in front of those clients, but it's a struggle because all of those employees consume information in different ways. So we can't just print off an employee benefit guide anymore and physically hand those out and expect everybody to read through it, understand, enroll, and have no questions. There are questions constantly coming in throughout the entire year, and people need to be able to access their benefit guide and the details about their plan really throughout the entire year, especially outside those open enrollment months. They need to be able to access that quickly and easily and um, be able to find what they're looking for. It's employee benefits and health benefits are just like an overwhelming topic, and I think people have a lot of questions. Sometimes they're even embarrassed to ask some of the questions because they, Mm -hmm. I should know what this means, but I don't. Where can I go to find out more of this information? So we're always trying to think of different ways to help educate those employees, to help them make, help make them feel more comfortable, to make them feel confident in whatever benefit options are available to them, make sure they're trusting their employer to do the right thing and to have the right benefits available for them. And then their employer trusts us to make sure that we're setting up the plan in the best way that we can. So it's to long story short, to answer your question, it's definitely a year round initiative to try to continue to educate employees on what's available to them and what they need to know. Yeah. And I I think I'll I'll throw out something that I I saw that I love what you, you were able to do just kind of to draw attention to a couple areas. One is you have um, educational resources, the sort of 101 questions, and they could Mm -hmm. be, some people are video learners and they want to have a quick snippet video. And some people want a longer video and some people want, you know, this, they're very textual. And so they just want to read text in a linear kind of journey through a guide. And some people want to navigate directly to the areas that they have a question about because they're pretty familiar and so people are totally new. And so they want a different experience. And there's different generations in the workspace and they have different preferences. So I feel like you've done a tremendous job of allowing this diversity of consumers of this benefit content. And some of them are not even employees of a company, right? They're the spouse of yeah. the employee who really is the principal decision maker on this topic. And so how do you get that to them? in the right context as well. Some of the secrets that like made you innovate in that area. And what have you done that kind of you're really excited about in bringing that to your person? Definitely having the benefits available online and digitally for all of these employees. That's been the first goal that we had is how do we make something like a benefit guide more accessible to the employee, but also to their spouse at home, to the decision maker at home. So how can we do that? And that's really where we would lean on relay to because we could, there's so many different privacy levels depending on what the employer is comfortable with. But the majority of time, 
The link is just available to everyone. They can send it to their families at home. They can bookmark it. A lot of employers will then put it into their HRIS system. Giving them that digital access was kind of goal number one. But then where we took it, I would say a little bit further was we didn't necessarily just want to upload the existing benefit guide and have them view that with a link. We really wanted to improve their entire experience. So we created what we're calling digital benefit guide websites, and we lay it out exactly like a website. You can navigate with that top bar. You can scroll through. We have a lot of different buttons that jump to different pages. And it's just a, it's a much different experience and it's a really great user experience. The other challenge that we have with a lot of our clients is... So, so, so I'll pause you. So you're mirroring yeah. the document or presentation with a website. And so you could create it in a very... It's a very simple to create. It. It's a you know, PowerPoint effectively, but it's yeah. designed in a clever way where people that want to feel like they're consuming a website are getting that web-like experience. Was that Yes, you're exactly right. And that was really key to making this whole thing because... Again, we're a small department. We have over 200 clients. We can't create every single benefit guide every single year for all of our clients. So we created a PowerPoint template. Mm -hmm. And when we created that, we knew we were going to use it and relate to. So it was designed specifically for this benefit guide website experience. We did just a little bit of training with our account management team who they don't have design backgrounds. They don't have marketing backgrounds. They're not always super great with tech, um, but we designed What's it. What's an average age just to like for, because I've met some folks from the industry and it's a, it's, you're probably more on the spring chicken side of the, of the industry no, or is it like, does it vary? It really varies. It really does. And I'm not just saying that to get out of answering the question. It really, we're like all over the spectrum. We have people who have been doing benefits for years and it's so great to have their information because they've seen and they've experienced everything. So They've been in the workforce for a long time. And then we have that younger generation also that's just entering the workforce. They haven't seen and experienced as much, but they're a little bit more aggressive with the technology that we have. So we have a really good mix. There's definitely uh, a lot of different ages within the organization, but we knew we had to create something that they could all use, whether they were good at tech or not, whether they're good at design or not, that shouldn't be part of their job. Just plugging in the numbers, and being able to have access to a technology that's easy to use, didn't require a ton of training from, from me. So we designed our PowerPoint knowing that we would have account managers using it and that we would need them to upload that then into the system. So designed specifically for this digital kind of benefit guide website in mind. So it's a good end user experience, but it's also, we set up a template so that not a ton of heavy lifting on my team and pretty easy to use for the account management team. So a lot of different purposes there. Awesome. Um, so you effectively, I'm going to, I'm going to label it because I think this is the way we think about it a little bit, but you could democratize marketing to people who would never think of themselves as somebody who would produce marketing grade content or that, absolutely. They, that are website builders. They're like uh, what, website, what? Like they, that's not their, they don't think of themselves as I'm going to go spin up a landing page. Or yes. a site, right? Like they, they that's a, not their DNA. And yet they're going and doing that in effect. So you democratize marketing and design for them. Absolutely. And it really empowers them too. They are so proud of themselves when they're able to use this and offer like a really wonderful experience for the clients and to be able to say, oh yeah, I helped create this. I think it's really empowering for all of them to be able to do it. And then they're excited to do it for a lot of their other clients as well. And we looked at when we were trying to figure out like what solution was out there for us to be able to offer this digital experience for our clients. We looked at a lot of different ones, but that's ultimately how we landed on Relay to is we felt like it gave us the best opportunity to be able to like mass produce a lot of content because we, it, it's got to work for every client, it had to work for every department, like we talked about earlier. And we just had a lot of purposes and anybody in the marketing field can work with somebody to create a really great website. But how many of those great websites can you create in a year? 
Can you create 200 websites in the months of July, August, September? No. Ahead of, ahead so of, yeah, like it's all concentrated, right? Like it's all, because when <laughs> yes. people, like you you are like in this two, three months period is when majority of the clients need that absolutely. site, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. And so we can do a lot of setup in advance. Like this spring, we started doing a lot of it. Early summer, we start doing a lot of it. But a lot of our clients, actually the majority of our clients won't get their renewal until October and then and maybe in early October and then maybe in late October is their open enrollment. So we have a one week period that we get their numbers. We get the to them. They approve them. They come back to us. We finalize them, confirm with the carrier, then get it updated in the benefit guide and have to make it live for all their employees to see. So there's a lot of the day before open enrollment starts. We're trying to get stuff done as fast as we can. And that's really You're basically why like 200 custom websites in, in a day. Yes. <laughs> in yes. A day, in a week. A <laughs> and, yeah. and by the way, one of the things that I noticed, and you, it's maybe a, 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 a tweak in the industries that are more regulated is that some of those hubs that you're providing inside where the guides live, they also contain other documents, right? Tell us a little bit about that, because I think that there's probably a lot of other folks that have like maybe their flagship site, but then they have a underneath and all that goes into this and all the supporting resources. And I, I, like, those are not that, like, you can't, there's no really easy way to integrate them, but I think you managed to do this. So I would love to hear your take. It's, there's two purposes to it. And the first one is a legal reason. There are certain documents that by law, an employer is required to make easily available to all of their employees, some different compliance documents, some of their different plan documents. They legally have to make sure that they're providing those to every single employee. That was a challenge we saw. If they didn't have an intranet or an internal site, they were like, how do we get this? How do we get these documents out to everybody? It has to be like available to the public too. So it has to be on like a public facing site. We had, to, we knew we had to get these documents in there to make it a lot easier on the employers. So we created a separate hub for that. But what we really discovered, so the AI was not one of the reasons that we even picked Relate to. We didn't even know how cool the AI was going to be. We just knew we wanted that digital website experience for the benefit guide. But then we learned all about the AI and it has been one of the best features that we have. I think I even told you we advertise it as AI powered digital experience software and immediately everyone's benefits are boring. What is this? AI stuff. Tell us more about this. It's one of those when Harry met Sally moments when you're like, <laughs> I got to have that AI digital thing. Here. I, I like yes, it. Yes, exactly. But so the plan documents also serve a purpose for that and the compliance documents. So when an employee is in their benefit guide website and they have a question, they could go over and type it into the AI chat. And as long as we have those plan documents stored in there, the benefit guide doesn't have to be 100 pages long, 80 pages long to list out every single detail. That's so overwhelming. If we have the plan documents in there, the user can ask the question in there. And even if it's not answered in the benefit guide, it will pull that information from those plan documents. So it makes the AI work really well, but then it also serves the purpose of a public facing website to share those compliance documents and the plan documents and all of that stuff. But Basically, it really helps. You could, that. you could go through thousands of pages of across 20, 30, 40 documents and find the, and get fast to the one question, specific question that may be covered. One of the Absolutely. stories that I heard is I have a, whatever spe special medical thing that I'm particularly worried about. I want to get to that quickly. How can I do that? Where is it, where are the which plan that sits in? Find that yes. sounds like that's very real questions for some families that are trying to both make the right decisions and not be overwhelmed by consuming thousand pages across. You're absolutely correct. And it's a huge, I don't want to say burden because it makes it sound like then HR teams don't want to help their employees, but they get bombarded with so many questions from employees like, is this covered? Is this medication covered? How much is this going to cost me? Which hospital should I be going to? Just a lot of different 
medical questions. And what we've realized, because again, I was thinking once I learned more about this AI chat, that it's a really great tool for employees. And it is. Maybe they're too embarrassed to ask their HR person a question. They can go into that AI chat and ask it in there. But what we're discovering is that the benefits are so complex that it's hardly possible for one person in an organization to know everything about it. So these HR teams, they'll get questions from employees, then they'll go to the AI chat and ask the AI the question (laughs) because they don't know the answer. And then they get their answer through the AI and it shows them exactly what document it's in, what page it's on, and they can go there and really quickly answer a question for these employees instead of having to search through like pages and pages of documents. And maybe then they'd have to spend hours on the phone with the carrier's customer service waiting to hear back when you can just type it in the A chat and they get the answer. Right. So if I'll, I'll play it back. So I hear you use this AI chat in your kind of RFP responses and your own marketing. And I saw a screenshot of it on your website, which was awesome and made my day. So you're, you're doing it in the marketing, in sales, and then the, guess what? People like it. They So it helps you. Then they it helps them. So it becomes their little sidekick friend. And mm-hmm. then it obviously ultimately helps employees get faster, the right information that helps them make decisions that take care of their health and their family, which is really, I think we all ultimately could, who wouldn't get behind that? Um, Absolutely. So Absolutely. it feels like it's, there's many it's almost like a value chain of benefits around this. Totally. And we talked about like the biggest challenge when it comes to employee benefits for employers and it's educating their employees. What One of our, uh, to completely switch gears now, you, t- you brought up the RFP process. Another huge challenge we were experiencing is that we get these gigantic RFPs from prospects okay. and we spend hours and hours filling these RFPs out. And we're happy to do it because we want these new clients and we really want to show off and we love talking about ourselves. But what we realized is these RFPs end up being 30, 45, 50 pages long of information. And we're thinking to ourselves, there's no way that these people have time to read through a 45 page document. So we're spending hours filling out a document that we're not even sure anybody is even reading. Back to the AI chat then. Those prospects, then if they're just a few things that they really care about in that RFP, they can go into the AI chat and ask those specific questions and get their answers right there instead of having to dig through that entire 45 page document to find the answer. So they're also Do you let them the- know? Do you let them know about it? And you've mentioned it like, hey, this we want to be easy to work with and you know, Abs- you don't want to hide the like, small print type of thing. Is that yes? Like one of our goals is to be really transparent with all of our fees and our commissions and things like that. That's our ultimate goal is to be really transparent with our clients. So we feel like being transparent, like right from the get-go, really gets them comfortable with us and will trust us. So we're like, hey, here's our entire RFP. We have it on this platform. Use it through here, view it through here, use this AI chat. All of our report examples are in here. You guys have full access to that. They can click to different appendix items that we also have stored within Relay to, but then we talk about them in the document. So it's a whole really seamless experience without having to read through a 50 page document. So it's a little, so it's, and let me imagine. So it's a little meta because it's basically says we're easy. We, we want to work and you know, help you consume the information the way you want to. And here's, RFP response, and here's a presentation, or you know, later use it in finals presentation. Inside that, you're providing, making it very easy for them to search for stuff, but also access real life examples of what you're doing, which could be was related, could be with something else, but oftentimes it, it sounds like it could be related to on these sort of differentiated employee experience or the way you do the reporting with your clients or how you help them make better decisions, whether whatever level they are, whether they're chief human resources officer or benefits expert, you you can you providing like the full range of evidence of how you're easy to work with versus just saying, trust me. Yes, <laughs> that- exactly. No, yeah, you're exactly right. Because a, a lot of our a lot of these RFPs ask, what makes you different from your competitors? And we can, it's easy to say, oh, we're trustworthy, trust us. Or we have 
the most experience. And I think I told you this before, there's four of us here in Indiana that all say we're the biggest in the state. And based on whatever numbers we decide to use, we are the biggest in the state. So we're, we're all telling the truth, but I really feel like using relate to has been a huge differentiator for us because they get to actually experience during the finalist process, what it would be like for their employees to use this technology that we keep talking about. So we, we talk about our AI powered digital experience software, but they actually get to use it and they get to see how it works and they can envision all of the ways that it would benefit their team and all of the ways that it will benefit their employees. So it's just like a real world demo or like a real world use case for them. And Finally, I, somebody I, using AI chat in business in real world versus just <laughs> talking about some pilots. That's great. Yeah. And I really do think it's one, it's, it sets us apart and our last couple prospects and finalists presentations that we've been a part of, they have specifically called out like the way that you were able to present this information was so different than anyone else we worked with. And it was so easy and it was so helpful. That's one of the reasons that we chose to go with you. It's uh, I love marketers that bring in the revenue. This is, this is amazing. This is the dream of every marketer. And, yeah, it is. And it's, historically, it's been a little bit like, oh, I bring in the leads or I do this or a brand. And uh -huh. here you've, you're creating a branded and differentiated experience, but it's actually so close to revenue and the differentiation of delivery that it sounds like it's taking, it's making a better revenue generation portfolio that's directly attributed to marketing. Absolutely. And then our advising team and our sales team, they love it because they can go into the analytics too. And they can actually see and maybe even tie some numbers back to that. We know that this many people or the, this many decision makers at the company have went into the document and viewed it. And so it helps with that too, validating everything that we're doing and how many people are seeing our stuff and how many people are looking at all the pages and what pages are they looking at. So the, the analytics too have been really helpful. Got it. So you're able to show that this digital experience um, is actually has evidence of employee engagement on the kind of if you're going at that level but and then you could tweak it over time and improve it absolutely it sounds like it could be a pretty secret weapon in a proposal to say hey we have the smart solution and then see if people actually engage and then you may tweak your strategy depending on where they engage or if they engage is that right Absolutely. And we've been talking about, which I feel like has been the, the theme of this whole thing. It's okay. The, the sales team can see the analytics and the RFPs and me for all of my marketing stuff. I have a lot of different gated content that lives and relate to, and people are required to put in their email address. I could see how many views that's getting and how many leads it's generating all through relate to. And then we can send employers their financial information and we can see we, usually those are password protected. So then we can see the exact individuals who are looking at the plan performance information. And then we have the benefit guides and we can see how many employees are viewing the benefit guide. And then we can report back to the employer and we can say, hey, you've had 800 views on this and the majority of them are spending the most time on this HSA page. We think you need to educate your employees more about the HSA and how it works and the best way to use an HSA. So it's also been informing us on what topics to help educate their employees on throughout the entire year. Oh my God, I see. So you could basically know where there's the most interest. And then you could also say, hey, you told me this is really important and you're paying a lot of money for this. And nobody yes. looked at it. <laughs> Let's go exactly. redesign the guide to drive that maybe health and wellness program that, that we're piloting or whatnot. Is that kind yes. of a... Absolutely. So we're not just suggesting, hey, here's what we think you should in inform your employees about throughout the year. Here's what we think. Here's what the majority of employers do. We can go into the analytics and say, no, this is exactly what you need to be informing your employees on because this is where we feel like they're clicking this the most or they're watching this video the most. They clicked on this pop-up and they're reading this definition about this insurance term. This is where you need, this is the information that they want to know and that they need to know. So it's more of an informed decision when it's coming to how do we communicate with our employees better? What do we, what information do we share with them? Got it. So you're moving away from a monologue to really like an informed discussion. 
where you're paying attention to somebody's body language mm -hmm. and you're based on that, you could have guide the conversation. So. Yes. And like, yes. And it like absolutely feels so custom too for our clients. Okay. Mm -hmm. We have a custom communication plan based on the analytics of your benefit guide and your documents. Awesome. I love it. I, this is one of the reasons I wanted to have you on Whitney is just so you're connecting the dots in areas where people historically have not been able to do. Every great HR and corporate comps team wants to be a little bit more like marketing, but I think they just sometimes maybe lack the analytics or lack the tools or they just get get stuck in what doing whatever they're doing. And you basically democratize you know, award, like stuff that you could do award-winning content. I saw some of your experiences. They're very beautiful. You managed to do amazing stuff with a small team, but you basically democratizing it all the way from insurance carrier information to, to this bespoke benefits packages to employees. I'm curious, is there this competitive nature of the insurance and health insurance world that's driving even more of a necessity around this. This is not a nice to have. You, know, you mentioned that you have four competitors, but I think that's not just related to brokers, right? I just think there's a lot of competition and a lot of complexity that we're talking about. And how does this, does it reduce complexity? Does it give, is it driving, is the edge to get to get to be more competitive and lead the industry? Guide me a little bit on the competitive nature. Absolutely. Yeah. And there's all, definitely a very competitive industry and we have a lot of great benefits advisory firms in the state. And I think that it's wonderful to have that much con competition because it really encourages us to constantly be better and to constantly be innovating and to be better than we were the day before. So I definitely feel that. And I, I don't want to, I want to be the firm that all of our competitors are chasing after. I want them to say, we want to be like LHD. Have you seen their stuff? It looks so good. Have you heard what their clients say about them? Have you seen how they walk through the renewal process? Have you seen their plan performance documents? So I want to be that agency that people are chasing after. And there are certain things that I think we do better than anyone else in the entire business. And I want to make sure that we continue to be innovative and cutting edge because I don't want to ever, I don't want to be status quo. I don't want to be the same as any of our competitors. I don't want to offer the same things. And I definitely don't want to fall behind. So we're always looking for, okay, what will make us just one step ahead of our competitors? Like, how are we going to be that much better? What can we offer our clients? What can we do to make things easier for our clients? And so we're just always looking at different ways to be better and I feel like technology is the number one thing that we've been using lately to make us better. And yeah, just we're always wanting to be one step ahead and figuring out what we can use to be one step ahead. And I think I really, I feel strongly that Relay2 is putting in that, us in that position. And we, we just did a rebrand, which we had been talking about a little bit and if there was anywhere where I felt like we could improve, it was in the look of our deliverables. We service our clients better than anybody in the entire state. But our our look, it, it just left something to be desired. So we did our new rebrand, but it's more than just the look. Right. A lot of times what I hear from people, they'll say, oh, give it to marketing and they'll make it look pretty. And I don't get offended by that because... We do make it look pretty. We make a lot of stuff look pretty, but we also want to display information in a way that's easier for our clients to digest. Mm -hmm. So it's actually like making the content better and making it look nicer and then putting in a platform like Relay to that makes the user experience better. So we're not just attaching a gigantic PDF in an email and sending it off that they then have to search through their inbox for. They have links to these hubs where they can go and they can access all of this beautiful information and helpful information. And right. we, we just making it easier, always trying to innovate. And I think that's how we differentiate ourselves and are always like one step better than the competition. I love it. I think this sort of distinction between the for the visual form and the fact like the utility of it and how you combine the two 
to create a beautiful experience, whatever you are in the information journey. We got inspired rigidly by Steve Jobs, who I love his quote to his team. He said to someone, you guys baked a beautiful cake, but for frosting, you covered it with duck shit, <laughs> right? I, I think that's okay on the podcast. And and it was it's such a visceral metaphor, right? But I think what I love what you've done is you have the rebrand and it's a consistent, but even in doing that, you've thought about how to make it interactive and more visually interesting for your industry to get an edge. And then on top of it, you're using AI and all these other things. Do you know, hey, look, you may not care about the beautiful brand. You may just want to know a very specific answer that sits in page 54 of document number 24 that you would normally never discover if your life depended on it. But now you could answer that with one question. And that's where you can buy. And, and by the way, you get there and you get the context, which is what I think is great. What you've done is like people, you get an answer, but it's not some sort of made up AI thing, right? Like you could go and find, check and validate it because this is actually, you could read the full context. It's very convenient. You don't get lost inside there. So you're and that's been, this, yeah. That's been really important to the HR people that we work with because the number one question that we get all the time is, does the AI give you wrong answers? Are you getting wrong answers? Like we don't, it does not give you wrong answers because it will go to the exact place and give you the exact page number and the exact document where they found the information. So you're not getting wrong answers and it will essentially it's citing its source right below where it's answering it. So you have the confidence and your employees have the confidence that they are getting that right answer. I love that feature in the AI, how it like links back to that. Amazing. One of the, I'll give you a shout out that I was reading up about LHD and we got to know each other through United Benefit Advisors, which has over a kind of million employees supported through that group. And you were selected as partner of the year award recipient there. Thank you. you, know, Thank you. It, it's, it's amazing to see, you know, because we see it on our end, but I'm sure you can bring it across the business that as an innovator, you really are leading the industry, leading groups across across states, across the country in this experience. And so I wanted to ask you about this perennial challenge between kind of marketing, creating content, and then salespeople never being super happy about it and being sometimes late adopters around this. And you've, you've shared a few stories that there's always early adopters and then there are some folks that are even don't have an incentive to change, but then over time they change. Tell us a little bit about how are you getting the rest of the organization excited about the change that the marketing team has introduced? For sure. I think the way that we can get the most success out of something like this is having our own kind of internal champion or a sales champion, because I can go into this group of salespeople and I can talk all about, hey, I have this new technology. You have to use it. You have to try it. You're going to love it. And they're all looking back at me like she's in marketing. She doesn't know like what the sales team needs or, or she doesn't know what it's like to be sitting in those meetings. And I've been in doing this for 25 years and I don't want to change what I'm doing. Why would I all of a sudden start adopting this technology? What I've always done has always worked. So why do I want to change? So we always are going to get a little bit of that, but we had a newer salesperson and he's pretty aggressively trying to grow his book of business. And we've worked really closely with him to make just a lot of custom documents and a lot of custom prospect presentations and custom deliverables. So we've worked really closely with him. And then in turn, he's learned a lot about how we are delivering our information and our message out to our prospects and out to the industry, just working really closely with him, we have set up some really great prospect hubs and putting those that RFP in there. He's done some custom data analysis for a lot of those prospects. And we'll put that information in there, put some testimonial videos in those hubs. And then when it's time to submit the RFP, he does it through Relay2. They get that whole experience. They can easily access the RFP. They access the AI chat. They have really quick access to all the appendix items. So it's easier for him. It's a really great way to deliver these RFPs and all of the information. 
But the real difference maker is when we have started winning new clients. Mm. Essentially, because of not only because I'd like to think it's only because of the marketing deliverables and what those look, but he's got a lot of great information in there too. But when we start proving the value and the success of everything that we're doing, and there's a salesperson who's using it really well, and he's actually like winning new business, it really starts to show that value and convince a lot of the people who probably would have been very late adopters and they can get excited about it. And then we have all this feedback from clients that they love the experience and they'll talk to their friends in the industry and their friends will be like, wow, that's absolutely incredible. Like I want to work with a company like that. So it helps with referrals. So really having that early adopter, the sales champion that works very closely with us, that's been the best way to show the value and to uh, really be able to measure some of the success of what we're doing. Got it. So you effectively... Uh, were hand in hand and you co-created it was your expertise in the tool and then you've enabled them to to do stuff on their own i would imagine over time but you needed to partner together to create the the first experiences so you couldn't just make it up on your own you exactly like that pioneer right yes we needed him for the content and he needed us to be able to package it all together and make it easily digestible and then package it into a a hub where we can just share a link and he can easily send that off again, instead of attaching a gigantic 50 page PDF with 50 more pages of appendix items. And then you get the error message back that it was too big to send. So then you have to upload it to our share file and then you have to send a secure link. And (laughs) this is just much easier. Amazing. I love how we went big picture down to the details. I can't get my PDF to get through as important as it is. I'm really grateful to have you on on this journey. And I can't thank you enough for sharing this. And I know you've you've shared your experiences, best practices with other folks in the industry. And I salute you to that. Um, What can, what, what can people, how can people find you? How can they discover LHD and tell us how we can, our audience could learn more from Whitney and, from the award-winning work that you guys are doing. I love calling it the award-winning work that we do. We are officially award winners now. We'll definitely go to our website and check out our new brand and let us know what you think about that. It um, was a labor of love. If anyone's ever done a rebrand, they know how, how much time it takes and how involved so many different people have to be. Our website is LHD, letters L-H-D, benefits.com. Uh, So definitely go check that out and then find me on LinkedIn, Whitney Boyer, LHD Benefits. Uh, Send me a message. I'd be happy to answer any questions or um, walk you through some of our different experiences that we have. Uh, Like you said, I've done that for a lot of our UBA partner firms. There are other independent insurance agencies across the entire country. A lot of them are pretty similar size as us may have kind of small marketing teams or maybe even never had a marketing team and are like, hey, we need some help with our marketing. Can you help us get started? What advice do you have? I talk to a lot of different UBA firms and go back and forth, brainstorm different ideas. Yeah, go check out our website and find me on LinkedIn. I'm happy to connect. I'm happy to tell you more about our award-winning deliverables and everything that we do. But thank you for having me on today. It's been fun. Amazing, Whitney. It's been a treat. And then it, it's been fun to clone you for a little bit and, <laughs> and have you share your story with our audience. Congratulations again. Um, this is something that we saw the amazing work that you were doing in our platform. And we wanted to salute and celebrate innovators that are doing things, even without engaging beforehand too much with us. You just figured stuff <laughs> out. So we we are grateful. And you're, I'm not surprised that you're doing award-winning work. It's obvious to us. Thank you again. Yeah, thank you so much.